Could any prehistoric creature have gone against the T-Rex? T-Rex fan or not, you'd probably say no. And you'd be wrong. And no, this creature was not another dinosaur, which makes it all the more terrifying. In fact, it was something more than a dinosaur, far exceeding even the T-Rex in weight. Dinosuchus, literally translating to terrible crocodile, was anything but a slow aquatic creature. Despite living in a time period when huge dinosaurs roamed the lands and the seas, this massive beast made all of them think twice before invading its territory. And you can see why that had happened once you take a look at its physical appearance. Estimates of Dinosuchus's size vary, but scientists believe it was between 26 to 33 feet or 8 to 10 meters long and weighed around 5,500 to 12,000 pounds or 2.5 to 5 metric tons. Some huge specimens even suggest it could have reached up to 39 feet or 12 meters and weighed as much as 18,700 pounds or 8.5 metric tons. That's a lot heavier than a T-Rex. Apart from the size though, one of the most striking features was its skull. It was broad, inflated at the front, and had two holes in the premaxilla, which truly made it unique among its kind. To this day, we don't know the exact function of these holes. As for the size of its skull, it could reach up to 5.5 feet or 1.7 meters long, about the same size as the skull of a Spinosaurus. The teeth were thick and robust, with those at the back of the jaw being shorter and rounded, perfect for crushing rather than piercing. So yeah, it just wasn't built to give its prey a chance. And if Dinosuchus wasn't already terrifying enough, it also had its back covered in large, deeply pitted osteoderms, which are bony plates that provide extra protection. These osteoderms literally made its back look like a tank's armor. All these features made it look a lot like a crocodile, but you should know that it's actually more closely related to alligators. Discovery of the brain case of a Dinosuchus shows it belongs to the same superfamily as alligators and caimans, known as Alligatorodia. This means it shares more in common with the American alligator than any living crocodile. But just because everything apart from its brain case makes it similar to crocodiles, we'll compare it to the largest crocodilian alive today, the saltwater crocodile. And trust me, Dinosuchus made it look like a baby. Saltwater crocs are big, but they're only about a quarter of the size of the biggest Dinosuchus. And much like its size, everything about Dinosuchus was huge, even its bite force. Dinosuchus had a bite that could make you shiver. And it all makes sense once you look at its skull and teeth in detail. Apart from its skull, which was not only huge, but also super dense and strong, Dinosuchus had 22 incredibly robust teeth, each about the size of a banana. The teeth near the back of its jaws were short, rounded, and blunt, perfect for crushing large bones. Those closer to the rear jaw, though, were shorter and rounded, and weren't used for piercing like the other teeth. This suggests its bite was not only powerful, but also very durable, capable of smashing through tough prey with ease. But what exactly was its bite force? A study claimed Dinosuchus could deliver a maximum bite force of over 100,000 newtons, nearly double that of a T-Rex. This would make Dinosuchus one of the most powerful biters ever. While this bite alone would have been the utter end of many animals, Dinosuchus didn't rely on it alone. For a creature from the Cretaceous, it was quite intelligent, which is obvious from its preying tactics. Dinosuchus was a master ambusher, much like modern crocodiles. It'd lie in wait near the water's edge, ready to pounce on any unsuspecting dinosaur or other animals that came too close. And yes, you heard dinosaur, but more on its diet later. Now, once it captured its prey, Dinosuchus would use its immense crushing power to inflict fatal injuries. One of the most terrifying tactics Dinosuchus likely employed was the death roll. This move, used by modern crocodiles, involved grabbing onto prey and then spinning rapidly to tear it apart. And unlike some other prehistoric crocodilians like Sarcosuchus, Dinosuchus was well built to handle the stresses of this maneuver. Its strong, robust skull and powerful jaws meant it could perform the death roll without damaging itself. Safe to say, Dinosuchus had every physical advantage possible. Good news for it, 
bad for every other animal living alongside it. So, let's take a look at its behavior and diet. Though Dinosuchus had a mostly aquatic lifestyle, it likely ventured onto land, especially since it's thought to have preyed on dinosaurs. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence for Dinosuchus's hunting dinosaurs comes from hadrosaurid tail vertebrae found in Texas, which show bite marks matching Dinosuchus teeth. This means even duck-billed dinosaurs such as Gryposaurus and Critosaurus were on its menu. Even large theropods like Appalachiosaurus might not have been safe, as some bite marks on their bones have been attributed to Dinosuchus. But dinosaurs weren't its only food source. Dinosuchus also preyed on marine turtles, particularly the Borromese side neck turtle, and large fish. Its teeth, especially the robust flat ones near the back of its jaws, could straight up crush turtle shells. This indicates that Dinosuchus had a diverse diet, varying by location. The smaller Dinosuchus in eastern North America likely fed on a mix of marine turtles, large fish, and smaller dinosaurs. The larger Dinosuchus in Texas and Montana, though, might have specialized in hunting bigger dinosaurs, making it the deadliest predator in its region. But the question is, if this croc was so big it could even take on dinosaurs, how was it discovered as a crocodile in the first place? Well, the terrible crocodile story starts way back in 1858, when American geologist Ebenezer Emmons found two huge fossil teeth in Bladen County, North Carolina. No one could have imagined that these would belong to a crocodile because of the sheer size. And so, he mistook the teeth for a pleosaurs, which was a 32-foot, or 10-meter long, apex ocean predator. It wasn't until the early 1900s that things started to get clearer. Fossil osteoderms, which are bony skin plates, were discovered in Montana, but even those were thought to belong to an armored dinosaur called Euoplocephalus. But the real breakthrough came when W.J. Holland put all the pieces together in 1909. He realized these fossils were not from a dinosaur or a marine reptile, but from a gigantic prehistoric crocodile. And naturally, he named it Dinosuchus, literally meaning terrible crocodile. As more Dinosuchus fossils were found in the 40s and 50s, they started to really see how horrifying this predator would have been. The American Museum of Natural History even created a plaster model of its skull and jaw to show what it might have looked like. This model was a bit oversized though, and based more on modern crocodiles than alligators, which is a huge mistake that we'll be talking about in a while. Still, it helped people imagine just how massive Dinosuchus was. Coming to today, scientists think Dinosuchus looked a lot like a giant alligator, but only three times the size of the ones we see today. And if you're wondering how it got to the size it did, you just have to look at its growth rate. Dinosuchus grew at a pretty slow rate, taking about 35 years to reach its massive adult size. This slow growth was tracked through rings on its osteoderms, the bony plates embedded in its skin. These rings are just like the growth rings in trees, showing how the animal grew year by year. It's thought that Dinosuchus got so huge because it lived a long time, not because it grew quickly. This is different from dinosaurs which grew fast, reached maturity early, and had shorter lifespans. This did not mean younger Dinosuchus were to be taken lightly. See, the osteoderms did more than just track growth. They also provided serious armor. These big, heavy plates ran down Dinosuchus's back, giving it great protection from attacks. Plus, they were attachment points for connective tissue, making Dinosuchus strong and able to move efficiently on land despite its size. This armor, combined with its other powerful traits, made Dinosuchus an apex predator, to the point that its presence might have affected the size of other creatures in its environment, especially theropods. In the areas it lived, no theropods grew as large as Dinosuchus. This suggests that Dinosuchus was the apex predator, outcompeting other large predators and possibly even limiting their size. Its slow, steady growth allowed it to live long, almost up to 50 years, and dominate its habitat, seeing several generations of dinosaurs come and go. That's also one of the reasons Dinosuchus ruled an entire continent. So next up, we have its habitat and distribution. This beast roamed the Earth around 82 to 73 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. 
Fossils of this massive crocodilian have been found across a wide range in North America, showing its extensive habitat and distribution. Dinosuchus fossils have been discovered in at least 10 U.S. states, including Utah, Montana, Wyoming, New Mexico, Georgia, Mississippi, New Jersey, Alabama, North Carolina, and Texas. Some remains have also been found in northern Mexico and possibly other areas, suggesting an even broader range. And in case you're wondering how it spread over such a wide range of habitats, it's actually quite simple. Wherever Dinosuchus went, it had literally zero threat, as shown by its interaction with other species. Given its primarily aquatic lifestyle, it most likely didn't cross paths with many terrestrial animals, unless they ventured near the water's edge. Those that did, however, definitely became prey for this massive predator. Dinosuchus lived in habitats abundant with turtles, such as Boromese, Denizinomese, and Neurankylus. These turtles, along with bony and cartilaginous fish, provided plenty of food in the water, making it unnecessary for Dinosuchus to hunt on land frequently. However, when it did, small Ornithischian dinosaurs were likely targets, and even larger dinosaurs could fall victim if they came too close. In areas like the Kaiparowitz Formation, Dinosuchus lived alongside various theropods. These carnivorous dinosaurs were common, but they didn't pose much of a threat to Dinosuchus due to their size and aquatic advantage. But one of its most interesting potential interactions was with mosasaurs. These giant marine reptiles, some as large as Dinosuchus, shared the waters with the crocodilian. Although no direct evidence of interactions between Dinosuchus and mosasaurs has been found, it's plausible they encountered each other. Both were formidable predators, dominating their respective environments. Dinosuchus also coexisted with a variety of other dinosaurs, like Ceratopsians, Hadrosaurs, and Ankylosaurs. It inhabited regions rich in life, from freshwater lakes and rivers to coastal estuaries, and possibly even ventured into deeper marine waters. All of this just begs one question. If Dinosuchus was so invincible, what exactly happened to it? This terrible crocodile mysteriously vanished about 73 million years ago, well before the mass extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs. But what exactly caused their extinction remains a mystery. Unlike many other prehistoric creatures, Dinosuchus didn't disappear because of a sudden catastrophe. Its size could and could not have been a factor. On one hand, other large predators survived for a long time after Dinosuchus vanished. But at the same time, Dinosuchus wasn't just big. It lived longer, grew slowly, and ate a lot. So even if other predators weren't a fair match for him, they were still competitors for food. Dinosuchus shared its world with numerous other formidable creatures, including large theropod dinosaurs and marine reptiles like mosasaurs. As the populations of these competitors changed, so did the availability of prey and Dinosuchus at some point would have had to ditch its ambush tactics and switch to direct confrontations, which it wasn't used to. Another possibility is that changes in their environment played a role. As the Earth's climate and geography shifted, the habitats Dinosuchus relied on could have changed dramatically. Perhaps the estuaries, rivers, and coastal areas they thrived in transformed in ways that made it harder for them to find food or reproduce successfully. But despite all these theories, the exact cause of Dinosuchus' extinction is still unknown. As paleontologists continue to study fossils and uncover more information, we might eventually solve this puzzle. In the meantime, it's truly amazing how Dinosuchus ruled North America for more than 10 million years. And even though there are a lot of gaps in its story, like the absence of a completely reconstructed fossil or a fully confirmed size range, one thing we do know is it was fierce deadly and terrifying, unlike anything we could ever see. And that's a wrap. If you ever popped in front of a Dinosuchus, which way would you want to go? A single bone-crushing bite or its instant death roll? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.